In part one, I showed you how to set up your panels, your panel borders, and to mask off your panel area in Photoshop. And that's already been done here in this document. Just to bring you up to speed, I have a document that's 11 by 17. It's only 72 dpi, and we're going to um, do our prim primary sketching on a, s on a small layer so that it doesn't slow down, on a, in a small document so that it doesn't slow down. I've got the panel borders, which I created in the process shown in the first part. I have a group with the panel area masked off. And now what I'm going to want to do is to do some sketching with um, a, like a blue line pencil. And in Manga Studio, there's a system by which it converts whatever is in a layer to blue. Even though what's in the layer may be black and white, it shows you blue instead of black. And I used to do this in Photoshop by creating a layer and then creating uh, a hue and saturation um, adjustment layer over it and colorizing it. But that is not as elegant as another technique you can use. So I'm going to create a sketch layer inside my panel area folder. I'm going to just create a new layer. I'm going to call it sketch layer. And I'm going to go to the layer properties and I'm going to color it blue so that I know right away that it's a blue line layer and it doesn't have final artwork on it. Now this is just a plain old layer and I'm going to start drawing on it just to show you what the effect that I'm going to apply is going to do. I have a sketching pencil tool. I'm going to start drawing. I have a cat in the panel, but I don't want this to be final. And so I want to colorize everything that's in this layer as blue. And I think the best way of doing this is to double click on the layer and open up the layer effect, go to color overlay, and set it to blue. I have this set, this blue set as the default, because I use it frequently, and then I press OK. And um, the nice thing about that is that you don't need to constantly select blue under your color palette. You can pretty much keep everything as black and white. And um, if you, for some reason, want to change this to final pencils later, you can just turn off the effect and it turns back to black. And I, I use this enough that I created an action that when I press a button, it creates a layer, makes it blue, ma puts a co color overlay on it, and, and just sticks it in there. So that way um, I can do very, very rough work, and then I can um, make another pencil layer on top and keep refining and refining until I get what I want. I'm going to bring up my actions here. Create sketch layer. Go. Created another one. Made it blue. I'm going to take my old sketch layer and bring down the opacity. And then I'm going to go in here. I might zoom in and refine this drawing more. Turn off snap to grid. Sometimes I forget to do this, but it can make things get a little bit angular if you don't remember to turn that off. So I'm going to lay in this panel. Just drawing a cartoon. I think I want it to look like this. And of course I can flip the canvas horizontal, and I bound that to a hotkey because I do it a lot. So I can mirror it and see if I have any very strange or slanted figures. At a certain point I might just start working on a new sketch layer all by itself without having the other one active as a guide.
But as you can see, I'm not putting that much thought yet into this. I'm just showing what you can do so that later I can show you what inking and what penciling and inking is capable of in Photoshop. And the nice thing about working in Photoshop is that I can be constantly transforming things. I know it's relatively easy to do this in Manga Studio, but it um, there are too many key presses for my taste. I just want to be able to move things around and transform them instantly. So I'm, I'm laying in this panel. I am not. I'm making this up as I go along. I'm not working from pencils. But the other nice thing is that if you have a bunch of scanned images of your pencil drawings that you did on paper, you can bring them in and put a color overlay effect on them so that they are turned into blue line. Um, which is nice if you want to do your pencil work and your layouts on uh, with just plain pen and paper or pencil and paper and then bring them into Photoshop for manipulation. Alright, so I got this blue sketch. I kind of know where everything's going to be. I know where the panel's going to be. The word balloon character is talking. And then I'm going to finally do um, a little bit of a pencil refinement in black. Because this is only 72 dpi, it's not very high resolution. You can see I'm at over 200% zoom and everything's starting to get kind of bitmappy. But I'm okay with that because as far as I'm concerned, it I don't need to worry about getting into final resolution until I am going to be inking. So I'm getting my pencil drawing in here the way I want it. If you're the kind of a person who does really detailed micromanaged pencil renderings before you do inking, then by all means do what I'm doing now at a higher resolution. If you're the kind of person who sculpts out what every single line weight is going to be before you start inking, then do that. And um, I'm not a particularly good inker, and um, I don't have very much practice with that. so. This is just the system that I'm doing. I, I try to keep things very, very spontaneous and loose, but that's not everybody's working method. And this is good enough for the way that I am able to pull this stuff off. So there I've got my pencils in one particular panel. And you understand, of course, that in theory you would repeat this process for all the different panels. Here's what this looks like at 100%. This document is 11 by 17, and chances are that not only would it be very high resolution when you printed it out, but that you'd probably reduce it to probably um, uh, like 11 by 9 or slightly smaller. Standard comics pages are pretty small, and the benefit of working at ridiculously oversized Res um, document size and eventually resolution is that it's very forgiving. When you reduce your your ink work, it's going to make things look a lot better. It's, it tends to smooth over a lot of 
little mistakes that you make and unsteady lines become much crisper when you reduce them. So for now, um, we'll just pencil things in um, and then in the next episode I'll just talk about good settings that you can use for inking in Photoshop, which I think is the trickiest component because Manga Studio's inking tools are so good. I don't think that Photoshop gets that good at inking, but we can certainly make it better than it would or ordinarily be, and, um, and I think if you do want to stay in Photoshop, there are certain ways to make it the best inking experience possible. So I'm just going to talk about that in the next episode.